Troy Donahue was an actor who broke out onto the Hollywood scene in the late 1950s and proved a reliable presence on the screen for several years. Sadly, substance abuse issues plagued the actor throughout the majority of his life, and this caused his career to fall apart later on. Join Facts First as we explore how Troy Donahue says he was loaded all the time before his demise. Troy Donahue was no Rock Hudson. Troy Donahue was born on the 27th of January, 1936, in New York City. He was given the name Merle Johnson Jr. after his father. Troy's father was a high-level exec at General Motors, and his mother was a stage actress. Many years later, Troy received his famous stage name via a Hollywood press agent named Henry Wilson. Wilson was also the man responsible for coining such beloved stage names as Tab Hunter and Rock Hudson. While Tab Hunter and Rock Hudson went on to leave behind legacies worthy of their titles, Troy Donahue sadly didn't join their ranks, but he did manage to achieve some fame as a teenage heartthrob before his eventual demise from alcoholism. After a stint at a military academy during his teen years and following the death of his father, Troy attended Columbia University. While there, he studied with the intention of becoming a journalist. In the meantime, he took up the extracurricular activity of performing in plays. Pretty soon, he realized he was more interested in acting than journalism. He dropped out of school and headed to Hollywood. Legend has it, upon arriving, young Troy Donahue was spotted while eating a cheeseburger at the beach by legendary director William Asher. At the time, Troy was still going by the name of his father. William talked Troy into signing with Universal Pictures, and Troy made his acting debut in the studio's 1950 57 release, Man Afraid. He used the attention he was getting with Universal to attain a more lucrative contract at Warner Brothers, and they cast him in 1959's A Summer Place as the picture's lead. Warner Brothers had high hopes for Troy Donahue, and they put a lot of effort into promoting both A Summer Place and its burgeoning star. The film was a big hit, thanks in no small part to Troy's chemistry with leading lady Sandra Dee. Following the release of A Summer Place, Troy Donahue became a teenage heartthrob. Troy's fame came via magazines more than films. While Troy Donahue appeared in many memorable movies, it's inarguable that his fame as a teenage heartthrob exceeded his fame as an actor during the height of his career. The star could be seen gracing covers left and right on the magazine aisles, and it seemed like teenage girls couldn't get enough of him. He went on to achieve even greater fame by playing the title character in 1961's Parish. To this day, that stands as Troy's most popular film. Sadly, the actor began to see some diminishing returns in his career as he went further into the 60s. In 19 1966, Troy was let go from his contract with Warner Brothers, and this struck a significant blow to his self-confidence. He had always been a heavy drinker, but he started drinking even more in the mid-60s. This excessive alcohol use continued for nearly two decades, until he found himself homeless by the time the early 80s came around. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Troy was old friends with Francis Ford Coppola. By the 1970s, Troy's career was nowhere near what it had been just a decade previously. Still, the actor managed to secure a small role in the sequel to one of the biggest films of all time. Many fans who aren't familiar with his story may wonder how exactly he managed to secure a role, however slight, in The Godfather Part II. That was released in 1974, and Troy certainly wasn't a big selling point in films at that time. The reason he appeared in Godfather Part II was because he was a friend of Francis Ford Coppola during his childhood. While attending military academy, Francis was one of Troy's classmates. The two befriended each other, and that friendship lasted into adulthood. The character he played in the film was actually named after himself. It was Merle Johnson, which astute viewers will recall was Troy's birth name. Troy hit rock bottom during the early 80s. Sadly, Francis Ford Coppola throwing his old friend a bone by giving him a role didn't help things much when it came to his personal problems and dwindling career. Troy was still having trouble securing notable roles that weren't handed to him by old friends and was sinking further and further into the throes of substance abuse. What started out as simple alcoholism quickly grew to include painkillers and stimulants. By the time the 80s rolled around, Troy Donahue was homeless. The actor was said to have been sleeping in New York City's Central Park, not far from where he was born and raised. It was around this time when Troy realized he would need to make a change, otherwise he'd die. With limited career prospects coming his way, he managed to find employment as an acting instructor on cruise ships around Holland. Though that was certainly a step down from being a teen heartthrob, Troy Donahue knew the most important thing was getting his act back together. He joined AA in 1982 and remained sober until his death around the turn of the century. By that point, Troy was on his way towards a minor career revival of sorts, having recently toured with a production of Bye Bye Birdie. 
During the early 90s, he also appeared in a few low-budget films that went direct to video. Troy's turn-of-the-century demise. Sadly, it all came to an end for Troy Donahue in the summer of 2001. On August 30th, he suffered a heart attack and went to the hospital for surgery. The surgery was successful, but a second heart attack occurred the day after and Troy needed a second surgery. That one was not successful. He was pronounced dead September 2nd, 2001. He had been doing relatively well for himself at the time and was living in Santa Monica with the woman who was set to become his fifth wife. On his deathbed, he was visited by longtime friend Connie Stevens. Stevens is another leading lady he shared the screen with, who has retrospectively come to overshadow the man himself. The two starred together in 1961's Susan Slade and remained great friends over the course of the four decades following. Besides his fiancée, he was survived by two children and three grandchildren. Troy had a daughter named Janine, a son named Sean. As a result of his years of substance abuse, he didn't learn about the existence of his son until Sean was already 13. Sean's mother wasn't one of Troy's five wives, nor was she the fiancé the actor left behind. His mother made a point of not telling Troy about Sean until the actor was sobered up, which ended up being a wise decision. As soon as Troy was made aware of Sean, he managed to start up a relationship with him, and the two remained close until Troy's death. If Troy had been introduced to Sean during the years he was homeless and addicted to drugs, this likely would have been a much different story. Troy Donahue isn't mentioned much nowadays and doesn't get a lot of respect when he is. He was notably one of the inspirations for Phil Hartman's character of Troy McClure on The Simpsons, with the other inspiration being being Doug McClure. Like many teenage heartthrobs over the years, Troy was derided for what was perceived as a lack of talent and an overemphasis on his movie star good looks. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you remember Troy Donahue? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So if you want exclusive content from Facts First or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99.